Hello, this is Rizarad, and I'm going to talk about what are PowerShell commandlets for Power BI in this video, what they are used for, what type of things you can do with it, uh, and some examples of running it. Let's go and check it out. So let's start with what PowerShell is. Uh, PowerShell is a task automation configuration tools. Uh, it's not just about Power BI, it's about, uh, it, it's one of Microsoft tools that actually it gives you ability to write some scripts and using those scripts access the configuration of the Windows machine or do some task automation. Uh, and administrators use it a lot these days. So in fact, in the uh, over the past few years, administrators have been using this for a lot of uh, configurations. Like for example, if you want to schedule uh, backups of, or creating copies or configurations, for example, you want the Azure uh, VM to spin up at this certain time and then um, it be scale up or scale down at this peak time and then scale down in uh, non-peak times and things like that. It's a good tool for doing those uh, automation and configuration. You have to write a script, but these scripting languages are not as complicated as writing a programming language like C Sharp or VB.NET. So it's not a programmer. Uh, tool. It's more for administrators. It's easy to use. Um, you need to, of course, spend some time to learn different aspects of it, but it's not a complicated uh, scripting language to learn. Now, what are PowerShell? Uh, what has PowerShell to do with Power BI? So Power BI has, um, of course, the Power BI service, the place that we do all the configurations and hosting of Power BI objects. Now, Power BI provides some REST APIs which a programmer, like a C Sharp programmer, maybe .NET programmer, they can use those APIs and call it and access some of these service objects. And Power BI also provides some PowerShell modules or commandlets. These PowerShell modules or commandlets can do some of the actions that those APIs can do. For example, if you want to get list of all workspaces in your Power BI environment, uh, for your own user, or if you are a Power BI administrator, you want to find out all workspaces throughout the entire organization. You want to export that on a daily basis so that you know how the growth of workspaces are through the time or the number of reports you have in these workspaces, how it has been grown over the time. Um, and you want to write, or you want to find a way to, to do this type of thing. So PowerShell commandlets are actually giving you an option for that. It's not a complicated command line expression that you can use. It's really simple. Uh, there are some libraries called as PowerShell modules for Power BI. When you install those, you can get uh, these to work exactly what you want. I'm going to show you a few of these scenarios, not every scenario. For example, I'm going to show you a scenario of uh, exporting the content of a, um, not content, let's say exporting the list of workspaces into a CSV file, and then you can schedule it, uh, or let's say using a scenario of, um, of creating a deployment pipeline, for example, copying a, works, uh, copying a report from one workspace into another workspace without having premium functionality that gives you uh, the deployment pipeline in Power BI itself. Now to use these PowerShell, um, commands or modules. First, you have to install it. You need to have PowerShell installed on your Windows machine. It can be the PowerShell or PowerShell ISE. I use the ISE one because it's simpler to use. Um, so these are the requirements you need to have uh, on your machine to get to use it. Most of the Windows 10, Windows 11 machines have these configurations. Uh, how the installation works, I'm going to open the PowerShell uh, ISE now. Um, and uh, as you can see, we have Windows PowerShell and PowerShell ISE. The difference is that Windows PowerShell is basically pure command line where PowerShell ISE also brings a, a write bar, which gives you the list of modules and libraries. If you are not much professional with the PowerShell, um, this might be a better option for you. Run it as administrator because installing some of the modules requires administrator rights. Um, and this is what the PowerShell ISE window looks like. Quite simple environment. This is where you write your scripts. And here you have existing list of modules. 
Now I've previously installed Power BI modules on this machine, so that's why you see this list of Power BI modules, but by default you wouldn't see them unless you start uh, installing them. So how would you install it? Uh, there's a command called install module and you see as I type this will bring it in here as well. That is also one of the features of PowerShell ISE. Uh, so install module, then name, and then you just need to say Microsoft Power BI management. Now this is a list of uh, PowerShells that you can PowerShell modules that you can see here. Now if we install the first one that basically install everything you need um, but you can also install one by one separately uh, others. I'm going to start with the first one. So I've installed this so at the moment installing that wouldn't really um, do anything special because it is already installed. If you have it installed and you want to update it to the latest version instead of install module, you'll do update module. Um, so now that we have it installed, the next step is to connect to your Power BI service account and that is using this command. And all of these commands, by the way, you can find them in the uh, blog article that I have down below. All the codes, all the links uh, are in there. So connect Power BI service account will pop up a window that then you can uh, connect to your Power BI service account and just use pick up the account you want to use, login using that account. If the login is successful, you'll see your tenant ID, you'll see your username. So this means that you are logged in to the Power BI. Um, from from the PowerShell, of course. Now, as I said, I'm going to show you a few sample examples how this works. For example, let's start with a simple function like this, get uh, Power BI Workspace. Get Power BI Workspace, basically, um, if you combine it with all, will give you a list of all Power BI Workspaces. This would be basically all Power BI workspaces that either you have created or someone in your organization created and you have access to it. If someone created it and you don't have access to it, you wouldn't see this, right? So this is those that you have access to it or created. So it comes with the name of workspace, the type of it, is it part of a premium capacity or not? What is the capacity ID, the ID of workspace? This ID of the workspace, this unique identifier can be used later on in um, in some other functions. Now, if you are a Power BI administrator and you are keen to find out all workspaces under the organization, entire list of workspaces, regardless of who created that, regardless of do you have access to it or not, then you can use a script line like this. I'm making it a little bit bigger so that it's easier to see. Then you can use a script line like this, which I'm going to copy from my list uh, as I said, these codes can be accessed through my blog. So this scope organization will give you all workspaces across your organization. And this would take time, especially if you have too many workspaces, this would take time and, um, and uh, be prepared to do that. You'll also see some information about who is the, uh, what are the access rights on that workspace and things like that. Uh, now that you have this, which is quite, uh, uh, helpful to have. Uh, I'll show you another way to access these um, commandlets as well. Like how do you know get workspace is a commandlet? One way is to go to a module. For example, here are all modules. For example, if I want to do something with workspaces, I'll go under workspaces. Then it will show me commandlets under the workspace. So for example, you see there is a command that is get Power BI workspace. If I click on show details, this will show me the details of that command. What are the possible parameters? I haven't used these, but you can skip, you can filter, you can use uh, things such as all, which gives you everything. Uh, so these parameters are helpful and that is possible across everything. Like for example, we have um, a set of commandlets for uh, the reports module. On the reports module, for example, I can do copy Power BI report, get Power BI report, or export Power BI report, a lot of things like that. So it is helpful to use this one as well. This is what I use mostly to start with or go to the documentation and start from there. Okay, now that we have the list of workspaces, what else we can do? Let's get back to that scenario I explained that. What if you want to um, export it as a CSV file. Now, 
Uh, in PowerShell, we have a lot of modules, generic modules that can help you in normal general tasks, like for example, exporting something in CSV or Excel or something like that. So this code, uh, which is a slightly longer version of that, so so far this is Get Power BI Workspace, Scope Organization, all. Then I use um, a couple of commandlets. One is convert to CSV, which will convert the export result of this to CSV, and it output it in a file uh, in this place. And I'm going to name it number two because I already have one. So when I press enter, this will go ahead and create that file. As simple as that. Now, because I didn't have that many, um, I didn't have that many actually um, workspaces in my organizations. I just had uh, very few seconds for this to run. If I go to my C drive, you should see this is already in there. If I open it, you can see that this is the CSV exported of all my workspaces. How simple is something like this with PowerShell, right? It's just one line of a script. Now, all you need to do if, for example, you want to do this on a daily basis, all you need to do is to schedule this um, on a daily basis. And there are uh, many resources. I've included one in the um, blog article that I have in the description below, uh, a link to it that explain how you can use Windows Task Scheduler to schedule a PowerShell script to run on a schedule that you want indefinitely. As long as your machine is up and running, this will do that. So it's just as simple as that. And then uh, you will have a point of time exported list of workspaces uh, and you can see who created that, what are the configurations of that and, and things like that. You can create a Power BI report out of it. So very helpful. Uh, let me show you another example scenario. There are of course tons of different scenarios you can do with this, but you see how simple it is. Another example scenario is that let's assume this. I have a workspace and I want to create a deployment pipeline from this workspace. I want to publish the content into another workspace. Consider this is my development workspace. I want to publish it to a test workspace from there to production workspace. If you heard deployment, if you heard about deployment pipeline in Power BI, that actually does this. You assign different uh, workspaces as different stages of the pipeline uh, of the deployment and it will create that pipeline for you. It's a really graphical, uh, nice, easy to use graphical interface, but that requires a Power BI premium. Now, if you know these PowerShell scripts, you can actually do that. It would require a bit of um, scripting and finding out how to do every uh, step of it, but, but it's not complicated. It's not impossible. Um, to a start, let's say to a start, I want to find out a report from one workspace and then publish it to another workspace. So first, to find that report from one workspace, you need to have the workspace ID. How do you get workspace ID? So these IDs that you see, these uh, unique identifiers, these are actually workspace IDs. One way to access them is through this. Another way is that if you are in Power BI uh, environment, and if you are in a workspace, let me just go to one workspace. For example, if I am in um, in something like this, if I'm in this workspace and you see I have a bunch of reports in this workspace, uh, I want to publish some of these into another workspace. In the URL of this workspace, after groups, I have a unique identifier. This is the ID of this workspace. Every object in Power BI ser service has an ID. Report has their own ID, workspaces has their own ID. So this is at the moment the ID of the workspace. So I can use that. I can copy this and then go to my PowerShell area and then use some functions such as, for example, this. Let's say get Power BI report. Uh, but I want those reports that are in this workspace ID. So one parameter is the workspace ID and I pass the workspace ID. So this will give me all the reports in that workspace. Uh, for example, to make sure that you are in the right place, you see CSS, CSNA movies. And then in here, I can also see CSNA movies, right? Uh, so this gives me that. Now let's say I want to um, get one of these and export it to another workspace. So 
Uh, what I'll do is first I export this. Now to export that Power BI report, I need that ID. So I'll get this ID copied. I'll use a commandlet called export Power BI report. And it would require the ID. So ID is one of the parameters, which is this is the report ID. And then um, export will download the PBIX file. So I can then call this uh, with the parameter out file, like what is my exported output. And I can have it something like this. Now, I think I already have one of these with that name. So I'm going to call this number two. So this, this is done just really fast. Now I come to, back to my C drive. I see this is the Power BI file downloaded and I can open it in Power BI desktop if I want to. But let's say now I don't want to open it really. I want to now export it into another, um, another workspace. Let me just find another workspace to, to do that. By the way, I'll, yeah, let me go and bring it. So let's say the workspace that I want to push this into is something like, like this workspace. Now this is the ID of the new workspace or the destination workspace I want to go to. Now I would use another command let's which is new Power BI report. And this new Power BI report I'm going to source it from the path and this path would be the path that I just copied from there. Um, I'll, I'll put it there, but let me first put workspace ID. So workspace ID is this new destination workspace. The path, I'll just use this as the path. So what I'm saying here is that get this Power BI report from here and export it there without opening Power BI desktop. It's all happening through the script. So it runs through that and it publishes it. And when the publish is successful, it gives me the ID of the report. Now it is published into the service. Let's go and see if this report is really published in the service. I'm going to just refresh this. And you already saw that this has been created. The only reason that it has number two beside it is that, <clears throat> is that um, I named it with that number two when I generated the PBIX file. Otherwise it would have been the same name. So this process is is just like that. Now, all you need to do is to define a loop structure to go through every report, every data flow, every object in the Power BI workspace source, and then do this export and import it into the new destination. Just like that. There's a difference between this, these commandlets of export and new versus the copy Power BI report. Copy Power BI report would keep a live connection to the original uh, data set. So it is slightly different. Now I'm not going to do all of that process in here for you. This is just an example of showing how this is possible and what are uh, possibilities. So uh, so let's get back to this question now that what is the difference between PowerShell um, commandlets in Power BI for Power BI versus the REST API? Are they the same? Uh, kind of, I would say. Uh, we had REST API for a long time. Uh, REST API is designed for developers to connect with Power BI service objects from a custom application and do a lot of things with it. For example, Power BI Helper is using those REST APIs um, using C Sharp application to interact with it. It comes with features such as documenting the service, uh, features like this, um, exporting one workspace content to another workspace, all of that using that. Now, if you are not a developer, um, then working with those REST APIs can be quite a bit of challenge. So that is why we have to PowerShell. It's like a simplified version of that. It doesn't have all the functions, functionality and uh, functionalities available in the REST API. It is like um, a slightly less version of that, but still you can manage to do a lot of things automated. These are a couple of scenarios that I showed to you, but you can do a lot of automation using this um, and this can be a great asset for Power BI administrator in every organization. But if you want to step beyond the possibilities, then go and have a look at the REST API and get yourself a uh, help from a developer as well. Uh, make sure to go and check it out all um, the 
commandlets and functions that we have available for each of these uh, and then play with it and see how it is going and let me know if you have any questions um again i'm reza rad uh, and uh, i hope you enjoyed this video if you like this video go ahead and subscribe to our youtube channel we have weekly videos on power bi thank you bye